Musgrove is here for the half hour happy hour. We are backstage, Mr. Malarkey's comedy at the legendary Sammy showroom with a true blue rising superstar in comedy, oh, sir. That's what I think. That's what I think. We are here with Sean Patton. Yeah. We're very, very, very happy to have Sean Patton. Welcome, that, sir. That was like a moment when, like, when you're like, when you're like with a woman and you think. You're, like the best you're gonna do is get the like make out and she <laughs> suddenly grabs your crotch. Yep, that's what that was. I just brought Sean Patton to completion. I didn't I did. realize yep. it was gonna be that much. Yeah, I brought him to uh, to completion. I'm well, doing well, well sir. Coach. Thank you. Good. And uh, first time to Reno. We were just talking. First about time to Reno, Nevada. Nevada. I was saying I'd been. This completes the trifecta. I've been to Vegas now. And I've been to Atlantic City, and now I'm here. And uh, let's just hope. This place is better than the other two because I don't really like Vegas. <laughs> you don't really like Vegas I mean, Vegas, like I grew up in New Orleans. And then there's Vegas. To me, like, if you grow up in New Orleans and you go to Vegas, like, I feel like New Orleans is like the Tom Waits. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, Vegas is like the Bruce Springsteen. Right, right, and yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, it's bigger yeah, and louder. New Orleans is the New cool hit place to be. Right. Yeah. And then. And, and Atlantic City is just an awful. <laughs> awful. I, it's you, awful. The best way to describe Atlantic City is imagine if an entire city had AIDS. And I don't just mean the people. I mean the buildings and the land and the sea and the air. And the cars and the concrete. Everything was infected with HIV. And dying slow. Like it's just such a and so the, we like to thank their viewers in Atlantic City for tuning in this week. Yeah, <laughs> get out! <laughs> but you are, man. You were, I was, you know, I was looking, looking some stuff up on you, and you uh, have are rising. How long have you been doing comedy? Like, I have been doing comedy a, a quite a while. Like this October makes eleven years. Wow. Okay. And I was in New Orleans for four and a half of those years. We didn't know any better. There's no comedy right. scene in New Orleans. There is now. Yeah. Now there is actually a great comedy scene in yeah. New Orleans. Go to New Orleans, check out comedy. But um. <laughs> The um, when I was there, it was very you know uh, DIY. You know, very right. like there was bars that would let us do shows. There was mm -hmm. an open mic, one open mic. You know, and we just kind of we were very. I hate to use the word punk rock because I feel yeah. like that's a word that gets over. <laughs> like, that's a phrase that gets like away. nerd, like, like nerd, started, yeah, like started, nerd. Yeah. But you know, and do you remember like the first joke you ever wrote? Like, oh Jesus Christ, dude! The first joke I ever told that got a laugh. How about that? There you go. That works. Yeah. It was about was about uh, <laughs> blocking, which uh, uh, like just thinking about it. I don't know if my face, <laughs> the, but the, like the the, the the taste, like that. I almost had acid reflux. I feel like it takes a, a comic five years before you start to really know who you are right. as a comedian, like what you want to say. And what style you are, because you know, because I don't, I disagree with people who say you should figure out what kind of style you want to be, yeah. whether you want to be alt or mainstream. mainstream. Like, well, that's all bullshit. Yeah. Like, those are all nonsense labels. Just like you know, like I, I don't like being called alt. Just like gay men don't like being called fag. I'm right, serious. Right, like right, I mean, right. when someone yeah. calls me alt, I'm like, why? Well, funny is funny. Yeah, funny is funny. Yeah. You find out, I say, five years in, where. What you are, how, like yeah. what your style is. Like, are you more absurdist? Mm -hmm. Are you more, you know, stream of conscious? Are you more cerebral? And then I think it takes another five years <laughs> to actually get good. Yeah. I think it takes a full decade to get to a point. I mean, not really, because there are guys, there are prodigies out there. Yeah. You know, you got guys who five, six years in and they're f***ing amazing right. and they're going to be amazing. But I feel like it took me a good decade. So I've just now gotten good. <laughs> <I feel like, laughs> well, it's a good thing you're here. You're in Yeah. Uh, and but you've been all over the world, right? You've done like uh, festivals in Montreal. You've done Melbourne. Like what? Yeah. Like you know? Do you, I imagine you learn a lot doing comedy in different yes. countries, right? Like yes. I mean, Canada is like Canada, and I know if a Canadian is going to see this, what I'm about to say, you're going to hate it, but I'm right. It's not that different than America. In fact, it isn't. Ooh. It is, you know, yeah. In Montreal, they speak French. That's the one... Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big difference, but they are bilingual in Montreal. That's about it. But yeah, I feel yeah. like they're smarter Americans. Oh, okay. That's what I feel like Canadians Probably. are. They're smarter, yeah. more open-minded That actually Americans. makes more... And I've actually heard that from a couple of different people yeah. who have gone over there. Yes, yeah, so that makes more sense. Canadian audiences are probably the best audience ever. <laughs> <laughs> what about, like, Australia? Like, that seems like it might be, like, a little bit more of kind of... I don't know if it's no. like a rugged city, or is it... I mean, no, it's not rugged, but, I mean, you know, you think out back in Australia, yeah. maybe a little dirty, like, kind of... No, know. no. Australia is very in, uh, in their... Um, What's it called? Not, not their, they have their own culture, but in their like day to day, you know, just sort of what's on the street. You know, you could be like, where am I? San Francisco, or you know, oh, it's not, okay, yeah. But the people there are very. There's a very there's a certain unique aspect to an Australian, and it is that they are way less offendable. 
Yeah, yeah. And way less sensitive than Americans. Totally, yeah. Like, ultimately, I I think that we are in the midst of like a second comedy boom. I agree. Yeah, it yeah. seems like there's a lot of young guys that are a lot, even not maybe not even young, but right. just guys that have been around for a long time that are really starting to kind of take over. And that's, and that, and that's great because I feel like this one's going to stick for a while because I wasn't around for the the first one in the late '80s, mm-hmm. early '90s, but that one just seemed to be. Club owners opening up clubs and being like, "Can you tell a joke? <laughs> yeah, Here you go. Yeah. yeah, you're headlining, and next week you're getting an HBO special." It seems like now it's all comics who have to do the work themselves. Yeah. Okay. So that's there's more, you know, it's a more grassroots feel, and I kind of right. am excited to be a part of it now. All right, well there it is. I mean, you know, Sean Patton here, at Mr. Malarkey's Comedy, the legendary Sammy Showroom. You can check him out at IamSeanPatton.com. I am Sean Patton.com. Right? And then are you on Twitter as well? I am on Twitter. It's um. It's Mr. Uh, M. R. Sean Patton, and it looks like I, it's, this has been pointed out. It looks like Mrs. Ian Patton, <laughs> <laughs> but it is just Mr. Sean Patton. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Sean Patton. And there, there you go. Hey, Twitter. Twitter's a weapon. Use it. That's a yeah. That's a Twitter's a, a weapon, and, man. Yeah, that's a big, <laughs> yeah. that's a big thing now. So there are people who are very funny people, but they are successful now because they can they tweet like the dickens yeah. <laughs> you know, so. follow this guy go to his website and uh if i may say so you look remarkably like john belushi i'm sure uh, you've heard it, that it, before and it's it's it, it used to it used to act like it used to really piss me off and then i was like well i could look like someone who sucked <laughs> yeah exactly. you know, i could look like you know paulie shore <laughs> and i don't i don't so okay i look like someone who was good at this okay good hey, fair that enough. works all right fair guys enough. sean patton thank, thank you very you, much Oscar. For coming by. come down check him out look him up sean patton we'll be right back the employees of that place refer to themselves as sandwich artists <laughs> i believe in that because i feel like when i go and place my order the sandwich artist hears it becomes inspired by it and creatively interprets it in the sandwich art right in front of my eyes I think I'll have some turkey breast. Four slices. Well, you're right, because the meat is the worst part of the sandwich. But I want more of that to ingest. Thank you. Yeah. How's about some lettuce? One pound of lettuce. A pound of lettuce. Amazing. Can I have some sweet peppers? One single solitary sweet pepper atop Mount Lettuce. I see the symbolism in that, you know? And it's challenging to me. We are all alone.